All right, finally, this is the video you might have been waiting since a long time, in which I'm going to show you how you can connect Ignition SCADA to RS Logix 500 without a real PLC via RS Emulate with the communication OPC DS. So I'm just going to show you what you can achieve in the end. So here you can see I have my letter logic, two bits here and one output bit, just for testing, right? And these two bits I can control either from the software itself from here or directly from the SCADA. So here you can see that this is my designer and this is purely emulation. So this is running in RS Logic Emulate. I will show you step-by-step step how to achieve that. And you can see that I can control from here. I can turn on and off the bits, which will reflect the output. There you see, I can turn it on. The output is on. If I turn the second one on, it will open it up and the output is off. So this is working fine. So it took me a while to figure out the possibility to do that because there are a lot of permissions you need to uh, assign and you need to check all different types of permission that you do need to give to your computer to do that. All right. So let's see how to do it step by step. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go offline. I save this project and close the software. Close my RS links. First, I close RS emulate. Close RS links. Close the designer. Now I can see that tags are not working. So everything is, I will save it. Everything is closed. All right. So the first step is we need to configure our DCOM setting. This is very important. Otherwise, Ignition will have some errors while accessing, accessing the tags. So to do that, you have to press Window R. So Window key and R key on your keyboard, and you will get this run command. Okay. This you can now think also get if you just type here run and then you can get this window. Just, just type here dcom config. So D C O M C N F G. Type this one, click on OK, and then you will come to this window. In this window, we have to allow some permissions. In this case, you will see computers, go inside, and you will see my computer. So click on right click on my computer, go to the properties, and then you will come to this window. So here let's First, you have to come to Default Properties tab, and you have to make sure this is enabled. Okay, this should be ticked. And then <clears throat> we go to Default authentic Authentication level and make sure this is set to default. Okay, and make sure Default Impersonation level select to Identity. These two, you have to make sure it is like this. So if it was having a different value, you have to make sure you have these values. Okay, yeah. click on Apply. And now what you have to do is you have to go to com security. Then in there, you have to check your edit limits. And here you have to make sure you have everyone as a group. Okay. And this is having both the properties checked allow. If you don't see everyone group here, or this is the first part, and then you also need to have anonymous login. This should also be allow. If you don't see any of these two, like if you don't see anonymous or everyone, you can add that. Okay. So to do, to add that, for those who don't have this option, click on add, and then here click on advanced, and then click on find now. And there you can find your everyone group, which would be here. So click on that and click on okay, and then click on okay, and this will come here, if it is not there for you. Similarly, you can also add anonymous. This is also required. Click on find now, and here's the anonymous. So anonymous logon, double click, Click on OK, and then you will find it here. So once it's here, make sure these two are checked and these two are checked. Click OK. This is what you need to do for the edit limit. Same thing you have to do here as well. In launch and activate permission, make sure you have everyone. This you can check for everyone. And anonymous, make sure all are checked. Click OK and click apply. So for both the limits, everyone and anonymous login should have all the permissions. Okay. Now you have to get, click on edit default. And here you can also have to make sure everyone has both the option checked. Here as well, everyone has both the option checked, all the option checked, okay? This is what you have to make sure to give the permissions. All right, once this is done, then you have to um, click okay. Let me see if there is any other step. Okay, then what you have to do, you have to go, okay, let me see property. 
and now then you go inside my computer you go inside dcoms configuration and then here you have to look for opc enumeration so in this case just change that to maybe just the name and go down and you will find opc this one opc e n u m enum okay enumeration i think right click on that go to properties and here you have to make sure the authentication level is set to none this is a step number one you have to make sure and then you can go to identity tab and make sure this is selected to the system account service only and then you can go to security tab and here you can check customize click on edit and make sure everyone has all the options checked all the permissions okay click on access permission again customize everyone has all the permission similarly here permission the here you should be having all application you can make sure administrator and user has all the permission checked okay so you can see i have for all my group all the permissions are checked that's it just need to make sure the permissions are okay so this you can do and besides that there's nothing much all right this these settings are just for opc enumeration and now just search for rs links so it will be here again go to properties authentication level default location you don't have to worry anything security this is already by default and we can check customize click on edit and make sure everyone has all checked that's okay you can also customize everything is checked permission everything is okay click on apply and click on identity and this you have to make sure it's interactive user okay this should be selected click on okay so i believe these are all the settings that you need to make things working okay once you do that you need to restart your computer i will not do it because i've already enabled these settings okay in my case this is totally fine in your case you have to restart the computer this is just for permissions okay once you restart the computer come back to your uh, computer screen and now i will write um, rs logics 500 i will run as administrator sometimes this is giving you better control and i will open my program which i've already programmed before this one okay this program is already there you can use any program that you like now i will open my rs links classic and there you have to make sure you go to drivers your driver is running okay let me see if i can stop it i can't stop it because it's communicating with something but make sure this is running this you can add from here if you don't have this driver just go here and select this one slc 500 and click on add in my case it's faded because it's already there so you can click on add and then you have to define the station number i have put station number one let me see if i can stop it i don't know why i can't stop it let me just reach start rs links run as administrator No, it's saying it's being can used by something else anyway so if you don't see it here just go to this one click on add and put a station number one i put here okay so now if you go here rs who you will see here your station number one is there this is i can remove it i don't need it so you will see this one here once you add the driver this is important okay so your rs links is configured rs logics is having a program and now we will open RS Logics Emulate. So Emulate has one program inside already. I will just turn it off. There were two programs inside. So now we can see that two one here. So when I removed it, this is showing me a cross, so I can remove it so that you're not confused. All right. Now in the Emulate, what we need to do, we need to load the program from this rs logic so the program which you make here so when you make a program make sure you compile that and there is no error and save it so once you compile and save compilation is very important compile it and save it and then we will load this program here which was 
Untitled 2. Click on Open, and here you need to define the station. So right now, station 1 is linked to this workstation, so we'll put station 0, or station 2, but not 1. Click on OK, so you can have, uh, you can see you have a file here, which is Untitled 2, but the station 0. And this is over here. So this is a controller. And now, very important part, the controller, which controller I'm using? I'm using SLC503. So this program has been made in this controller, SLC503. Okay, you can choose this one. I'm not sure if it's going to work with MicroLogix. I have to check that. Okay, let's check it. I will just unload this one and I remove it. And I open the program. I think the first one is with MicroLogix. 1000. So this is fine, no errors. Let's load that one now. The first program, station zero. Okay. Now let's see what comes here. Yeah, this is MicroLogix 1000. So this is now MicroLogix 1000, which you might be following with my course. So this controller is here and this coming from this RS emulate. And now if you go to communication, system communication, just define this controller and let's wait. Sometime it's uh, showing me some cannot be completed. Program is busy. So, some problem. Wait a second. Let me just close it. Status. All right, so some bugs. I'm not sure what happened. So now I can run it. So now my program is running. This is being simulated. So if I can toggle the bed, you can see it's off and it's off. So my PLC simulation is working fine with RS Emulate. Now we need to control that using Ignition SCADA. All right, now what we do is we open the SCADA. In this case, I have my SCADA gateway running here, and I will just log in here. Okay, I think this is a wrong gateway, 8089. So 8089 is my port address. Your might be 8088, because I'm running 8088 for a different SCADA uh, gateway. So this is 8089. For you, might be 8088, all right? So once you are in the SCADA screen, you can go to configuration, and here you will see OPC UA connections. So in your case, you might be having just one. I will just delete the other one. I will start from scratch. So you have just one connection. So we will create another OPC UA connection. All right, before that, sorry, this is a bit too fast. Before coming to Ignition SCADA, we have to do one more step. We have to link a topic to OPC DA. So for that, you have to go to DDE OPC, Topic Configuration. And here you can see on the left side, I have several topics. So I will just delete it and start from the beginning. I will create a new topic. Let's call it RS Logics 500. I created this topic. Once you create that, select the controller, which is the emulation one. So this is now connected to this one and click apply. So this will update the topic. Now these two are connected. This step you have to do, click on done. Now we are done. Now we go back to Ignition. Now in Ignition, you can create a new OPC connection. And there, instead of OPC UA, we select OPC DA. Click on Next. Go to Local. Click on Next. And now you will see automatically RS Links OPC server is here. This one you have to connect. Not the remote one, because your server is running locally. Select the first option. Click on Next and give it a name. I will call it RS Links DA. Okay. Rest, I will keep it as default. Create connection. This will create the connection and you will see the status connected. This is the first time. You have to make sure that your status is connected. Now, let's see if we can read the tags within this browser. You can go on the left side, OPC Quick Client. And now you will see RS Links DA. This is the one which we created here in our RS Links. This uh, RS Links 500. No, this is the this is the connection that we created here, OPC connection, RS Links DA. Okay, and once you go inside, this RS Logics 500 is what we created here. The topic. This you should be able to see. 
And because this topic is now linked to their controller, so whatever controller uh, variables are there, you should be able to see here. So when I open it, click on the online one, and now you will see the tags. In this case, B3 colon zero, I can't open it further and I can read it. And now when I read it, you will see value zero, quality is good. If here you don't see this value zero quality good, this means your permissions, which we did in the first step, are not correctly updated. Okay, so the first step which we did, giving all the permissions in DCOM, you have to make sure you did follow correctly. Otherwise, you will not see this value zero and good. So if you see zero and good, it means you are ready to work on your designer. So now I can open the designer. I already have installed that. So designer launcher. And let's open it. And I will just log in. Code and compile, code and compile. So this is my test project. I can also create, let's work on this project. I mean, this is something you have already learned in the course, how to create a project. So we create this project, which I have already created. It's just few elements on my main window. So I have us having my main window. Just make it bigger. This is my main window. And here now you can see there are three tags, okay? These are now red because it's not configured. So these tags I will just delete and start from the scratch. So now I can click on plus, new standard tag, OPC tag. So OPC tag, now you can give it a name. I will give B3 underscore zero, my first bit. This is the bit I want to connect to this one, B3 colon zero slash zero. This is my Boolean as my data type. And OPC server, I can select RS links DA. Now you can see that this value is here. Go inside by clicking on this icon and select B3 colon zero, click apply. And in the end, put slash zero. Apply and okay. This is the tag here. Now we can see that this tag is correctly being read by Ignition Sky. What I can do is I can copy that, paste, and double click, change that to one. This is my second tab, tag, and then copy paste again. And rename that to two. So now all my tags are configured and these are already linked to this one. Just to make sure I can directly do that again. That's it. Now you can see that if you Enable full read write gateway communication and click on play. Now you can see that these values will be updated. So once I click on this button, it will turn on. This bit is true, output is true, and this should be true. Let's see why it's not true. Oh, there is output O, not the bit. So let me just change that. This was because the other program was having bit. So I can open this and I can call it O0. And there I can change it. This is my output. This is, uh, let's see if this works. This uh, representation is not correct. No, this is, oh, that, there we go. Now it's working, it's auto, because this has been configured with auto, but when the state is one. If you like, you can also change it. You can text put on. Background color, let's make it line. So now it's on, and once I turn it off, now it's off. All right, so this is how you can now make some logics, practice some exercises, which I'm doing with the real PLC. You can try with the simulated PLC. All right, so one thing you have to make sure don't activate the inputs. I'm taking here B, not I. Okay, there's a difference. You don't activate the inputs directly from the PLC. You might receive an error, write error. So you can just work on the bits here. And the output, you can take O, but the input don't take I for the SCADA buttons. All right, so feel free to try that and let me know if it works for you. And good luck for the rest of the course. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.